I want you to imagine that you and a group of your friends are sitting on a front porch or the steps of an abandoned building or maybe a church, a place where you're just kind of hanging out. You're sipping on homemade lemonade, maybe, and you're just having a good time. It's a summer evening. Nothing's really going on. You're just talking and hanging out. As the evening approaches and the sun starts to set, a person appears on the street. Maybe they don't look like they belong in your neighborhood. Maybe they're a different race than most of the people in your neighborhood. Or they have a cast on their leg. Or they're elderly. Maybe clutching a purse. When you see that person, what do you and your friends do? Do you look at that person and think, oh, there's someone walking down the street? No big deal. And then you go back to your conversation? Or do you and your friends think that person might have some money or some goods that I could use to enrich myself? So, hey, friends, let's go rob that person. This is a scenario that is very similar to what the Detroit Police Department used in the early 1970s when they designed a decoy unit, which is referred to as STRESS, which is an acronym for Stop the Robberies, Enjoy Safe Streets. Now, I think that most of us can agree that when we see someone walking down the street, no matter what time of day it is or what they look like, We're not thinking about, should we rob that person? This is an important point because recently I have been researching the stress unit that the Detroit Police Department ran in early, in the early 1970s. I am, of course, looking into it because I'd like to incorporate it into my novels and as a native Detroiter, I am constantly asking the question, why my hometown is the way it is? So I'm always curious about what happened before. Why is it that I am pretty confident when I say that in my lifetime, I will never be able to live in my hometown again. It's not an option at all. And the reason is because I just don't think that you're going to have a good life if you are living in the city limits of Detroit. You are putting yourself at undue risk for crime, violence, uh, overtaxation, all types of things. So I just, I don't think that it's possible, which anyone who knows that they can't live in their hometown is a little bitter about it, I'm sure. And you wonder why. So that's part of my fascination with this. But what I found when I started looking into this dress unit was just so eye opening. And I wish that this was something that people knew more about because if they did, in the United States, we recently, in the past few years, had a conversation about defunding police departments. And I don't think that we would have had that conversation at all if we all were aware of what happened in Detroit. Because if you want to know what can happen to a city when it implements too many policies that are meant to coddle criminals instead of instill law and order, you don't need to look any further than Detroit. Now, A lot of people will say that the Detroit Police Department was baiting people when they started the stress unit. I don't think that that's true. Well, let me rephrase. That's true. They were baiting criminals. And that is what we want the police department to do. At the time when the stress unit was developed, Detroit had seen crime skyrocket. After the 1967 riots, 
Detroit was a cauldron of crime. It never stopped. Now, if you know anything about the 67 riots, you know that this was a time when tons of businesses and neighborhoods were were burned down, literally, and had to call the National Guard, all these things. And I was watching a documentary about that, and it's crazy. So many people were displaced, like their homes were gone. People went to Catholic parishes for food and shelter because they didn't have any place else to go. So that unrest and the riot that took place in 67, it sparked something that changed the city of Detroit in a way that it could never recover from it. And that is so important for us to remember. Now, I wasn't alive then, but the city that I was born into and I grew up in, I was always wondering, why is it like this here? Why is it like this? And I didn't get the full brunt of what Detroit was like until I went to public school. Now, I went to parochial school as a child. And then in high school, I went to a school that was supposed to be so great, Cass Tech. And I absolutely hated it. It was it was really bad. <laughs> but while I was going to parochial school, I was really sheltered from what the city was. And it wasn't until I got to high school that I learned that I lived in a horrific place. It was extremely violent. And there was all types of crime going on. And it wasn't just like, you know, like, I mean, crime was a way of life for a lot of people. And I didn't know that until I went to a Detroit public school. And I interacted with students who, yes, in their neighborhoods, that's what it was. Crime was a way of life. Selling drugs was, was a way of life. Killing people was a way of life. And I had never experienced that before. So as an adult, I am constantly looking for answers as to why I cannot live in my hometown. And honestly, I love Michigan, but I don't think that I ever want to live there again. It just doesn't look good. And it's so beautiful. Like Northern Michigan is amazing, but I just, I don't think that I can live there. I want to be happy and I want to live a good life. And I don't know that I can do that there. So the other day... I was looking for information about the Detroit Police Department stress unit. Actually, I've been looking for a few weeks because I would like to incorporate some of that information into a future story that I have coming out. Well, what I found initially was really disappointing. The University of Michigan has a, like, I mean, they just have all these, they have like a a website that you can go to and it chronicles a lot of different points in Michigan history, but particularly Detroit. And it's so one-sided and it's so, it's propaganda is what it is. And I was reading and I was getting really mad because I, I know that whoever wrote this did not grow up in Detroit. They don't know anything about Detroit because if you grew up in Detroit, you know that like, I am sure And I mean, this is just human nature. I'm sure there are some bad police officers always, yes. But if you grew up in Detroit, you know, and you're not a criminal, you know that you need the police so much, you know, like you really respect them because they are working one of the hardest jobs on the planet. Like they are police officers in Detroit. That level of danger that, you know, they're putting themselves in. Like, you just have to respect that. And if you grew up in Detroit, you know what that means. So you have much respect if you're not a criminal. (laughs) So as I'm reading it, I'm getting mad because I'm like, listen, Detroit police officers deserve respect. I just, I will not stand for them not being respected because I grew up there. I know how hard it is. So I'm reading this University of Michigan, whatever you want to call it, um, conglomerate of propaganda. And I'm like, no, no, I can't even, I can't draw real conclusions from this. I can't really call this research because I just, I don't buy it. It's, it's like quoting all of these like black supremacist groups and things like that. And I'm just like, I'm just not, I'm not okay with using that information. So I kept digging and I found a documentary that I have never heard of. And I keep up with Detroit news pretty well. But at the time that it came out, I was, I was getting married. <laughs> so I, 
I wasn't really in tune with that. I just taken a new job. I was getting married, all that stuff. So I missed it. But now that I've found it, I'm telling everyone about it because you need to watch this documentary. It is called Detroit Under Stress. And the man that put it together, his dad was a stress officer. And I, I really love the way that he approached the topic because he includes his dad and a bunch of other officers, but he also, he brings in like the, the founder of the Black Panther Party in Detroit and like professors of African-American history and things like that and a historian. He brings in other people to talk about it as well, which I think is brilliant. But if you're from Detroit and you lived in the aftermath of what happened with, you know, Coleman Young being elected in 74 and things like that, you, you need to watch this. And if you live in a major city period and really anywhere in the world at this point, because there seems to be a push to demonize police officers and law enforcement in general. And we need to stop that. We need to stop that. There's this idea that if you have enough social workers and social programs and things like that, you won't have criminals. And that's absolutely not true. I grew up in a place where people were handed all of these social services on a platter and they took those things and then they went out and they committed their crimes. (laughs) So I'm not a firm believer in hey, if you just are nice enough to people and you give them enough therapy, they'll be good. I don't believe it because my life says something different from growing up in Detroit. But this documentary is so good. You have to see it. I could not find it. I don't have any streaming services, so that's probably why. (laughs) But what I usually do is I type in um, like a title into Google and I see where it is at. I don't have any streaming services because my husband and I, we just don't, we we don't even have a TV. So like we watch everything on our computer or whatever, but I don't watch a lot of stuff. So, but when I, when there's something that I want to see, I will look for it. And I didn't see it on any streaming services. It might be, I don't know, but the best place to buy it, I think is from the creator. He sounds like a really great guy. He's got a few other documentaries and he does a lot of cool things with veterans. He has a thing where he like stops veterans that have a veteran plate and he asks them for a story from the time when they served. So I think that that's pretty cool. He also has a documentary called 10 Five Scout. And I believe that that is a story about a shooting that took place in Detroit between police and a black supremacist group. And the black supremacist group killed a police officer doing that shootout. I have not watched that yet, but I totally plan on getting it. As soon as I finish, I have a book I'm working on, but as soon as I finish that book, that'll be like my little treat. I'll watch that documentary, but I'm all about supporting creators. This guy says that this documentary was suppressed and I totally believe it (laughs) having watched it. Um, these are, police officers a lot of them in the documentary so just be aware there'll be language it'll be pretty hardcore like these guys are these are tough guys they were police officers in Detroit so just be aware that there is some language and they also do show some pictures of shootings shooting victims and things like that so um this is something to keep in mind when you watch it but honestly I feel like it's so worth it it just really it made me feel like, okay, I understand, you know, I understand more about my city now. So the link will be below. And if you do watch it, please comment. I'd love to hear what you think about it. Um, also, if you watch the other one too, let me know how it is. The Ten Five Scout, because I haven't watched that yet. But give it a shot if you're interested. There's also a trailer. I linked the trailer below. You can watch that too. But I really want this to go (laughs) like viral. I'm like, did people watch this? I, you know, I still talk to a lot of my friends and family in Michigan, obviously, and they've never mentioned it. So I'm telling everybody about it. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope everybody's doing well and I'll see you in the next one.